everyone so I've been really wanting to share my birth story um but obviously I have a newborn and it's kind of tough to videotape with her around but she's sleeping so I figured I'd share my birth story now um I also wanted to share kind of what was going on in the third trimester I know a lot of people saw that there was a lot going on um and I didn't want to share it at the time because I didn't want to I was getting a lot of information um and I didn't want to give anybody wrong information. Um, I also didn't want to worry anybody. So I didn't share anything. So I'm thinking about sharing that in another video because that, it's going to be a long video. There was a lot going on. Um, or I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to share it. If you want to see it, um, let me know in the comments below. Just let me know you want to see it. You want to hear about it. Um, there's, there was a ton going on. Um, and it was definitely a whirlwind of emotions um, and something I never thought I would experience. But anyway, that was that. And I want to share my birth story because um, it was really positive and I didn't know what to expect, honestly. So I'll start off when I first went in to get induced. I know people probably saw my post. I went in and I got sent home. So the background behind that, um, I was told I was never going to make it to 37 weeks. Um, really, I was told that if I made it to 37 weeks, I was extremely lucky. So, um, and I would be, I would definitely be induced if I made it to the 37 week mark. They would not let me go a day further than 37 weeks. I made it to 37 weeks. Um, that was April 11th and I went in to get induced. And I saw a doctor there. The doctor that was on was a doctor I had not seen. I had only seen her once very early in my pregnancy. Um, and mind you, my doctor, I had three doctors I was seeing continuously during my third trimester. And those three doctors, plus my high risk doctor, um, were the ones who said I needed to be scheduled at 37 weeks. But anyway, I went in, um, me and Dave got situated in our labor and delivery room, put on the gown, I was in the bed, got blood work done, was all hooked up, and the nurse took my blood pressure and said, this is not high enough for you to be induced today. And me and Dave kind of like looked at each other like, like, is that even a possibility? Is being sent home even a possibility? Like, what is going on? So... We kind of just took it as whatever, like he was just saying that there's no way I'm going to be sent home. Um, then the doctor came in and she said that she believed that I should not be induced uh, on the 11th. She said that my blood pressure was not high enough. And I explained that, you know, my blood pressure was in the 150s over 90s. And it was like that the majority of the time. And there are times where I have good days and there are times where it's just awful. And she said she still believed that I had time and Grace would still be able to stay in me a little bit longer and that I should be induced at 39 weeks instead of 37 weeks. Um, and basically went over the benefits of Grace staying in me till 39 weeks. So to say I was disappointed is an understatement. Um, I went in there thinking I was going to meet Grace that day. Um, I've been looking forward to being a mom for I don't know how long. Like, I, even my friends could tell you, like, I've been talking about being a mom for a long while now. Um, I've always loved working with kids. It, it's just been a dream of mine to be a mom and to think you're going to meet your baby and become a family of three and then to be told that you're being sent home. It's hard. Um, it is really hard, but... At the same time, I was so grateful because Grace would get to develop more in me and she, I don't know, it's a, it's a very odd feeling. I, I, but ultimately I ended up leaving grateful because Grace had more time to develop. Um, I ended up getting two steroid injections in my third trimester, so I knew she had developed at a more rapid pace than other babies because of the steroid injections, but I still wanted her to develop as much as possible in me. And I knew all the benefits of keeping me, keeping her in me longer. Um, so I was, I ended up leaving grateful. 
Um, but anyway, I went in at 39 weeks, which was April 25th. And honestly, my birth experience was pretty positive. I mean, there was only one negative part and we'll get to that, but overall my nurses and my doctors were very amazing. Um, I can't say enough about them. So I went in on the 25th, I was one centimeter dilated and I was thinning, but I wasn't at the point where they wanted to give me Pitocin yet. I had to take doses of, I'm gonna butcher the name, Misoprostol. Um, I was on that from probably 8 p.m. on Sunday the 25th until 5.30 on Monday the 26th. Um, at that point, I had an exam and I was, I have notes here. I was at three centimeters um, when I started Pitocin. And then I was told that I had to wait until four centimeters for them to break my water. Um, and ultimately I would get the epidural before they broke my water. They wanted me to wait until I hit that four centimeter mark. Um, so the Pitocin started that night, and let me tell you, it worked really quickly. Um, that night, I didn't sleep at all. I had contractions throughout the night, and it wasn't like I was in pain, I would say. I was in discomfort, not necessarily pain. Um, I was still able to talk through the contractions, though Dave was sleeping. There was no one to really talk to except for the nurses that came in, um, and they came in every once in a while and checked on me. Um, but I was also not able... It was the weirdest experience. I was not able to lay down on the hospital bed um, because if I did, the contractions were like 10 times more painful. Um, so I ended up sitting up all night. So they gave me, I had a chair next to me. Um, they gave me a medicine ball and a rocking chair and I stayed on the medicine ball most of the night. And then when Dave woke up, I was still on the medicine ball, but I told him my contractions were getting um pretty bad. And I asked the nurse when the doctor was going to come in that morning um, to give me an exam to see where I was at, how I was progressing. And she said that the doctor would be right in once they came in. So mind you, um, the doctor that came in was actually the doctor that sent me home. And she did the exam and said that I was at um, three centimeters still. And you know, it's kind of disheartening to hear that when you're going through contractions all night and you're still at the same spot. Um, they wanted me to wait till the four centimeter mark, like I said. So um, I waited off, I would say, until about 10 a.m. 10 a.m. I told Dave um, to call the nurse and ask if I can get the epidural because my contractions were getting worse. I wasn't able to talk through them, but they still weren't as painful as I thought they was going to, as I thought they were going to be, if that makes sense. Um, so the nurse was called. I asked her if I could get the epidural and she said that, um, she would call the anesthesiologist. Well, I think they kind of forgot that I was having all these problems in the third trimester and I actually needed blood work to be drawn before I could get the epidural. Um, my platelet count was low during the third trimester. And if it was too low, I wasn't able to get the epidural. Um, so I needed my blood work to be um, re-ran. So ultimately, after she told me she was going to call the anesthesiologist, she came in and said, we forgot we need to run your blood work before we can give you the epidural. So I had to get my blood work done. That took an hour. And then she said, the blood work came back. I'm calling the anesthesiologist now. Okay, so an hour from when I asked for the epidural, the anesthesiologist was then being called. So, uh-oh, she's waking up. But anyway, the anesthesiologist was called and it took them, I would say another hour to get down to the room. So two hours from when I asked for the epidural, um, the anesthesiologist, the student came down who was working with the anesthesiologist and she got me all set up and everything. And she said that she would come back down with the anesthesiologist and they would get the epidural in. So <laughs> they came back down 
and the anesthesiologist was there. He was getting prepared and I was sitting on the edge of the bed. We were all ready to go. And then a call came to my room, like the phone rang and there was someone on the phone for the anesthesiologist. So I was like, oh my goodness, like I've been waiting two hours now and finally someone's here. And then all of a sudden he says, oh, well, I have to leave. There's an emergency C-section. I have to go and do um, the epidural there. So they left the room and I asked the nurse how long it would be because I was already so uncomfortable. Um, and she said, you know, it's usually pretty quick. Well, another hour goes by. So there's three hours after I asked for the epidural and in comes the anesthesiologist again and I finally get the epidural. Um, finally. <laughs> it seemed like forever while I was waiting. Um, and so after that, after I got the epidural, um, they, my doctor came in. She said I was four centimeters and she broke my water. Um, and that was literally right after I got the epidural. And then it was kind of like a waiting game. They told me that I was going to progress faster since they broke my water. Well, an hour, not even an hour after the doctor left the room, I actually fell asleep and it, sorry, back up. After the doctor left the room, I fell asleep probably within 10 minutes. I was so tired from staying up all night. And I woke up not even an hour later and I told Dave I felt so much pressure. Like I literally felt like her head was going to pop out. <laughs> Sorry, TMI. But I literally felt so much pressure and I asked, um, I actually called the nurse. The nurse came in and she actually did the cervical exam, which I thought was weird, but it was what it was. And she told me that I was nine centimeters. And that, so I went from four to nine um, in under an hour after my water broke. So she went and got the doctor. Sorry, the dog's barking in the background. Probably it's somebody delivering something. Um, she went and got the doctor and the doctor told me that I was at nine centimeters and that she would be back once she checked on someone upstairs and she thought it would be time to push. Um, and that was around 5 p or 4 p.m. Um, she came back at 5 p.m. and we started pushing. Um, now, I, I didn't know what to expect with pushing, honestly, but some people have told me that it was super easy. Some people have told me that they were pushing for hours. Um, I ended up pushing for, so it started at like 5 p.m. I ended up pushing for around two hours, and that was because Grace is hitting my bone. So she was hitting my bone as she was trying to come out at her top of her head. Um, so she ended up being born at 7.10 p.m. Um, but her head was, the top of her head was completely bruised from hitting me. Um, which it looked bad at the time, but the doctor said not to worry about it because it happens so often. Um, but the whole process wasn't bad at all. I was, as I was pushing the doctor you know like she gave me instructions and but in between the pushes we were having a casual conversation like I was not expecting to you know be talking with the doctor so calmly but the entire time we were having a really good conversation <laughs> which was not what I was expecting um at all um and so after Grace got here they put her on my chest right away so we did skin to skin and after that honestly once they put the baby on you to do skin to skin you have I I, well, I don't know about anybody else but I wasn't honestly thinking about anything else other than her being on me and how amazing the time was and how much of a blessing she was and like I wasn't thinking about anything else but her and her being on me um but I didn't birth my placenta like other people do so the placenta was stuck in me still and the doctor had to go in and actually you could feel like I could feel her hand I still had the epidural but you could it was the most uncomfortable feeling but at the same time I really wasn't it, paying much attention to 